I'm a great believer. If America want to compete and create a healthy economy, the only way to go is really connecting the Americas economically. Latin America, 700 million people, fragmented, small economy, standalone. North America is 400 million people. Together is 1.1 billion people. America has no vision. China has a vision, the Silk Road. Saudi Arabia has a vision, EU has a vision, and some other countries have vision 20, 30 years down the road. America doesn't have any vision what we're doing. And what we are doing really providing this vision to America that we can create a robust economy. Miami is sitting right in between these two economies and Miami should be the Western Hemisphere global hub. That's the, the vision. And what we're doing, we're connecting the Americas on all level. It's not only building, the building really to house our ideas on fashion, art, entertainment, technology, agriculture, trade. All of these things that you see here is really was created to support this vision. America is on this kind of road. America first, close the road, close the borders. It's not going to save America, closing borders. What made America great in the past is going out to countries and investing and exchanging. Today in Africa, you don't see American goods. You don't see American cars, technology. It's all was given to China. So what we're doing really, we're trying to wake up the American people and tell them, hey, wake up before it's going to be too late. We went to Afghanistan, we invested $2 trillion. What did we get out of it? We went to Iraq, invested $2 trillion. What did we get out of it? We have Brazil joining Russia and joining China and India to create alternative coin. Our strength is the ability to print dollars. We punish government, we punish countries by sanctions with the dollar. Brazilian President Lula has defended the creation of a common currency for trade among the BRIC countries. If we lose Brazil, how many other countries are we going to lose? So what I tell the American really basically, you want to keep America safe? You cannot keep America safe by closing your borders. Closing your borders doesn't make your home safe. And throwing your garbage through the window doesn't make your home clean. So if your neighbors are poor and miserable, they're gonna to come to America. So it's the right thing to do, and it's gonna be also very rewarding. So we can go to Latin America country by country and really build the economy, help them build the economy, create middle class, that they don't have to immigrate to our borders. Our manufacturers should be there. I totally understood that food is gonna be a big problem in the future. The global warming, the floods, the heat waves, the growth of population going to create a big food problem for us. 700 million people sitting on the last land reserve left on the planet with major resources. You got unlimited amount of water, cheap labor. 700 million people that can be part of our economies. So I went there and we started investing there, but there's a lot of things to do. Managro is committed to empowering South America's agricultural sector to tackle future challenges and feed the world. Managro Fresh specializes in exporting Haas avocados. We are proud to be recognized as the first exporter of Colombian Haas avocados to South Korea and Abu Dhabi. We own and manage 1,400 hectares dedicated to cultivating mangoes, oranges, Persian limes, avocados, and milk. In the near future, we plan to expand with an additional 2,600 hectares exclusively for avocado production for export. We are also dedicated to providing technology and support to rural communities surrounding our farms. In Latin America, there are 30 million farmers. 95% of them are medium and small. They're very atomized with lack of information and disconnected from the main opportunities. In cropper.com, we have a digital platform that connects that farmers directly with credit, input suppliers, buyers, and knowledge. By 2025, we expect to have 10 million farmers using Cropper, becoming the main digital community for agro in Latin America. I saw all these companies 
startups, I look at them, I say they have their choices to create a Uber or, or WhatsApp or Flat. It's slim to none or, or, or get investors. Who's going to go to Colombia? Who's going to go to Panama? Who's going to go to Chile to invest? But I figured if I bring them in here, who work out of ecosystem, one ecosystem, it's a different story. 700 million people here can be in this corridor, could be in Miami. Then the investor is going to look at it as a 700 million people investment. Not only this, they can collaborate among themselves. They can work together within themselves. So it's going to be much more appealing. Flagler was, you know, sort of the epicenter of Miami for many, many years, and it has sort of gone away from that. And I think now is a wonderful opportunity with Moish uh, to completely revitalize and, and, and sort of recreate the, the, uh, the center of our city and the sort of center of gravity, if you will. I bought here 80 buildings, 80 properties downtown with the idea to create, live, work, play, and I call it the Silicon Valley of Latin America. We're working, bringing Israel into Miami. There's no reason they're going to be in Silicon Valley. There's no reason they're going to be in Boston or New York. This is much more like Tel Aviv. Flagler District is like Tel Aviv I grew up in. So this is the vision. It's not this building at this high rise or this kind of regular entrepreneurial shift that you see. This is a social impact. Nine, ten years ago, who would have thought of uh, Miami as a technology city? I went to China and I met with the uh, Alibaba folks and they asked me, where's Miami on the map? And when I was campaigning for Miami Tech, uh, people were like laughing at me, you know, really literally. But the pandemic really was the last push. I created the Mana Tech as, as an organization to promote and help companies who come to Miami and need the help. Manatech is an international entrepreneurship hub focused in supporting tech entrepreneurs with their U.S. market entry, with uh, getting investment in the U.S., and we are a connector. We connect them with the different actors in the ecosystem, and we do this with four initiatives. One is programs, which are educational programs. Another one is the spaces, the physical locations that we have, you know, 80 properties in, in downtown to support the, the entrepreneurs. We also have events that we throw and that we host here to connect them. And we also have the venture side where we're investing in these startups. I call it, what we're doing on Flagler District, I call it, this is going to be the economic engine of, of the future Miami. They're going to connect the Americas to the rest of the world. That's what we've been working on. But we need also fashion, but we need arts, because you cannot do business just for business. I call it business with culture. And especially now, people want to work in an environment where there is fun, where they can have time to enjoy, learn. We've been working on all these ideas. We went early on to Winwood, and I was able to purchase 45 acres in small pieces, very, very cheap, crime infested. I said, we're going to build here the cultural infrastructure of Miami. Miami needed the cultural infrastructure. Winwood was perfect. I thought it was perfect area, you know. So I said, we're gonna do inclusive, not exclusive. And we can really create a sustainable cultural hub because usually people build a cool area, then come the developers, put high rise building, bring the residential, then the area, the, the entertainment playground goes to another place. I ended up buying 45 in order to secure this vision, 45 acres. I was doing music event, fashion event, art event. I paid people to come play, I paid people to come paint. At least cost me $2 million, $3 million a year to promote this area. But I created value. And it also changed Miami. Many people are moving to Miami because of Winwood. Many people are returning back to Miami because of Winwood. Winwood became the daily routine of many and many residents in South Florida to visit, to play, and, and to work. And one of that person that we have to thank is Moshe Mana. He had a vision. It's a beginning of a cultural hub that we have, and we still have a long, long, long way to go. Because I'm coming from Milan, I'm coming from New York, I'm coming from all these cities that have so much of culture, abundant of culture. We are here 
sitting in the middle of 1.1 billion people economy and we must create this kind of a city. Therefore, we have the Mana Fashion Services. Our goal is to bring the fashion industry together. We want to be the platform for creativity and, and, and business to merge. We want to support South American brands, we want to support American brands, we want to support the Caribbean, but we also want to support our economy. Mana Fashion wants to be an anchor for business, trade, and creativity to live downtown. It's, it's the beginning of a movement. We need to have walkable spaces that are attractive, conducive. We need to have areas for people to congregate, uh, socialize, recreate. We need to have a thriving economy, hopefully things that people can get to easily. Uh, and we need to have housing, a mix of, of housing and work, shopping, and personal recreational ability too. Most developers build buildings. I like to say we build communities because I don't think about the building only, I think about the whole neighborhood. I invest in the building, the way it looks, have comfortable it is, what purpose it is servicing. I invest in the tenant, I partner with the tech, I partner with the, with the restaurants, I partner with the fashion service, I partner with everything I can partner with in the neighborhood. I invest not only in the building, in the tenant, and also in the neighborhood. We as people, we went in communities for the last 20, 30 years, but we went to digital community, which is Amazon for purchasing and Facebook for social. But nobody did the physical and digital combined. Because we're still in a body, we must do build physical spaces. People talking communities, communities, communities. Yes, for thousand years we live in communities. But the post-industrial revolution, we ended up away from our homes, our, our neighborhood. We go to work for an hour, an hour and a half, to always sometimes drive and we go back home. At the end of the day, we don't know anybody. I was very critical of this, uh, this massive uh, development where people do it without really thinking who's going to be within this building. I call it like a human trap. It's human trap. So you, in order to bring people to the office, you need to bring office where people can feel the office is extension of the home. The neighborhood where they work, it's extension of their home. Uh, it's extension of the office and extension of the home also. So you need to build also the facilities that provide the entertainment and the fun going to work. And you can't just go into this glass 100 story building. Yes, there is function to these buildings, but today the kind of office the headquarters is going to be different. It's going to be really literally you're going to have showers, you're going to have dining room, you're going to have entertainment, and companies are going to be spread out much more on a footprint throughout uh, America or throughout the world. So it, they're not going to be concentrated to one headquarter. Most of them, I'm not talking all of them, but this is a new trend of, I call it the, uh, the meltdown of the corporate, traditional corporate headquarter. Jersey City, I bought some 12 years ago, I assembled 2 million square feet of warehouses and I created the biggest art center over there of 17 acres. And today artists create work. We got fashion designer working over there. It's a whole very creative environment that we created. Yes, we're going to build residential there also. We're going to do, but the idea is to create the why to be there. And we're changing Jersey City. They offer every service you can imagine from, you know, basic art handling to delivery and installation to storage and I did all of that with them. You know, you need your Rothko hung on the wall, they'll deliver it and hang it. And smile. But today's really my focus is really Miami. And we, I, we've been working on level working on presidents of countries and technology companies, private businesses, schools, everything that we can put our hands on. So we are on a campaign. We have great designs for uh, ecosystem buildings. Uh, it's all play, work, live. I've been criticized for not doing, uh, for not developing. If you can stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. That's what they say. I take my time because this is it's just, it's not a project, like I said, this is a legacy. Something that I hope that really will be taught in school one day. With how we started from the ground up, you know, with ideas, 
with money, without money. We started this project, we are on the road and making it happen. We're going to show what we are doing in our day to day. It's very complex because running an organization and building it and, and making it happen, there's many issues and if, it's, if it is uh, uh, hiring people, firing people, uh, uh, finance, uh, purchasing, uh, uh, doing stuff that didn't succeed or people not doing their jobs correctly, this day, every day, oh, meeting with so many technology companies, meeting with fashion designers, meeting with artists. So my life is very, you know, I go from one subject to the next. How do you switch from one industry to another industry in seconds, you know? And you see, tech is not one tech. You got so many verticals in tech, you know? And then you switch uh, to milk cows that we have over there, then I switch to milk studios. And you switch to makeup, uh, to milk makeup that we've been dealing with, and finance, and then agriculture, and the type of fruit, and the type of avocado. He is a true presence. It's not just like meeting a person, it's truly meeting a force of nature. I came to America and I, uh, I had no papers, I had no knowledge, there was no Google, there was no internet. I just landed, I, I'm here. You know, I came into America with nothing and I guess I'm going to go with nothing when I go. <laughs> so, so what I want to leave, I, leave a, I want to leave a good memory and say thank you. I, I received a lot from America. America helped me execute who I am and discover who I am. It's a thank you to America, the country that supported me so much. I just want to help live a better world when I leave, and I'm going to leave, you know, sooner or later. Nobody stays here. Nobody being remembered for how much money he left behind. He's being remembered for what he did and what she did in the world. And that's the way I want to be remembered. And in a funny way, I was saying, when I was younger, I was thinking about the future. At this age, I'm thinking about after my life. And that's the way I look at it. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you so much.